Hi, I'm Mark King, Investment Editor at Columbia Threadneedle Investments, and here's what's in my weekly column. Britain began negotiations this week to establish exactly what its relationship with the remaining 27 member states of the EU will be when Brexit eventually happens. The talks will also set out the terms of the divorce, including what the UK's financial obligations will be to the EU, as well as what the status will be of Brits who live in Europe and Europeans who live here in the UK. But many of us are also interested in how the British economy will fare throughout the negotiations and once we've removed ourselves from the EU. Fully-fledged Brexit might be two years or more away, but that hasn't stopped the decision having a significant economic impact already. As we know, the initial market reaction to the Leave vote saw sterling fall sharply against the euro and the dollar. There's been the odd fluctuation since, but the pound has by and large failed to claw back these losses. Weaker sterling has now fed through into higher inflation as UK businesses pass on the costs of more expensive imports to their customers and consumers. But even though there's much uncertainty at the moment, it was a surprise that three of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee voted to raise interest rates recently. They were outvoted, of course, five to three, but nevertheless, a rate rise could be seen as damaging to an economy that's not quite on a firm footing. The Bank of England has so far avoided raising rates because of the nature of this current period of inflation. It's predominantly caused by currency weakness rather than sudden demand in the economy, and as such, any rate rise might not be quite so effective in tackling inflation, and it could damage the economy. For more on that and the latest news on house prices and pensions, read this week's column. See you next week.